good morning i consider it a privilege to introduce dr anita zulka retired head and dean coordination department of education of groups with special needs and inclusive education cell national council of education research and training ncert delhi india dr anita has been involved in various research training development and extension activities both at the national and international levels and played a leadership role in the major programs of the government of india like the samagra siksha abhiyan providing consultancy for develop, developing the state plans for inclusive education during this course she has developed three handbooks for including children with special needs in regular classrooms at primary and upper primary level and index for inclusive schools madam has also published a number of research and other papers in the area of inclusive education being a pioneer in the area of and a curriculum adaptation and universal de design of learning she has provided significant inputs for the latest national education policy draft 2019 national curriculum framework for the country and paper on education of groups with special needs dr jilka has been a member of the editorial board for the unesco's publication state of education report for india 2019 children with disabilities and a research study on meeting the human resource challenges for inclusion of children with disabilities in school a critical review of policies and practices on teachers and other key education personnel 2017 unesco india she was a member of the core group on children with the national human rights commission and drafted a vision paper for niti aayog on empowerment of persons with disabilities madam what an honor it is for us to have you here today and on this platform over to you madam um <clears throat> thank you so much and uh, i'm myself very honored to be a part of this uh, uh, gathering and such lovely people and i heard the last uh, keynote address of christine and i was very impressed at how important it is to be conversing communicating with each other so this is now the way to communicate with all of you and i'm very happy to be a part of this can you stop presenting so that i can start presenting yeah so uh since i um uh, have been working in the ncert for uh, nearly 3 decades and i have been working a lot in the area of inclusive education which is something which is a uh, you know a policy initiative for government of india so i am talking today uh for on online education from the perspective of inclusion so all of you here are experts in the area of children with hearing impairment although i have done studies on sign language and other thing but today i would like to talk about inclusion because that's where the future lies for all children as far as possible we are trying to all promote inclusive education if possible so <clears throat> So can you see all this? Can you yes, see my presentation and if you can hear me? Yes ma'am. Yes. So today yes, I will be talking about making curriculum inclusive whether it's an online course or whether it's for teachers whether it's for students whether it is for children with hearing impairments or with children with other disabilities they we are now in the age when a lot of online courses as uh, talked about by even Sumi and my earlier uh keynote speaker has talked about how important it is to develop the skills of the curriculum makers and also the experts who are designing these courses to make them more inclusive so that they are accessible by more and more children including children with disability all children with disabilities because we cannot have separate courses for separate disabilities so they all have to be integrated in the same course so i'll give you my um, the time given to me is 20 minutes i'll do justice to that i'll try to finish it in within 20 minutes because i know how long this can stretch it can go on so i'll try my best to do it within the time limit i have been given so first of all we must understand here we are what we are talking about we are talking about a curriculum which could be 
you know, designed by a lot of experts, teachers, professionals. And if you can see this concentrating, uh, concentric ring of conceptualization of the curriculum, you must realize where does India stand? What does India mean by curriculum? India is actually a lot of places in different, uh, you know, uh, regions of this country also, and also outside this country, maybe conceptualizing curriculums in a different way. But in the Indian uh, context and from the perspective of National Council of Educational Research and Training, we, which actually prepares the national curriculum framework, we talk about curriculum as being the larger broad, having a broader perspective, the outermost ring. If you see contents, goals, teaching methods, assessment, extracurriculum activities, learning environment, hidden curriculum and culture. When I talk about hidden curriculum, we have a lot of issues here. Disability, accessibility, accessibility to disability students is another issue. And gender is another issue. The children belonging to very poor class and poverty uh, backgrounds, uh, the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribe, the disadvantaged children all have some, you know, uh, inclusion uh, issues. And from that perspective, our curriculum becomes more and more inclusive if we these uh, uh, undertake these hidden uh, issues and integrate them in our curriculum to make it much more inclusive. So we think try to think about our curriculum being inclusive and the National Curriculum Framework 2005, which was designed by NCRT, had experts from all disability areas and also did regional uh, consultations to make the curriculum much more inclusive than what it was. So somehow we have this broader perspective of curriculum, which will include everything, including our learning outcomes, our teaching methodology, our pedagogy, everything is included in our curriculum frameworks. So when we are designing curriculum for any online courses, we have to take into our consideration that this is what we are looking for. Not only the content, we are also talking about how this online course is going to be taught, how it's going to be assessed. So all these things are important. All these parameters are important when we design any online courses or, uh, you know, uh, material for all children, including children with disabilities. Now, a lot of this material is being developed by NCRT, and there is an effort to do some in-learning uh, initiatives for children with disabilities. But we must remember here, and this is a caution I want to exercise, that we have to integrate all together to make it more inclusive. We can't segregate them within an environment where they're already with the other children, learning with other children. So the NCF 2005 had some guiding principles, which were actually the foundation for the curriculum. It was talking about, it talked about preparing material, which connects knowledge to the life outside school. That means whenever we can, uh, develop some material, we need to understand that many children may not understand a few things which they have not heard about. So uh, that's how it was that we have to connect are whatever we prepare in the online courses, which should be very, very local, contextualized, and can be flexible to for adaptability by anybody. Second, the teach, uh, ensuring that learning is shifted away from rote methods. I think you all agree with that because we don't want everybody to just memorize and come and vomit it on a paper, an assessment paper, because that actually is not learning. We also talked about enriching the curriculum to provide for overall development of children rather than remain textbook centric. So this is uh, the new buzz even in the new policy where we are ten, uh, talking about textbook as only one medium of learning. Textbook cannot be your syllabus. Earlier, the uh, and even now in many places, textbook is the syllabus, but this is not what actually makes children learn. Because once they uh, memorize the textbook and they vomit it on the paper, they think that class and the uh, goals and objectives are fulfilled, but that doesn't happen. That learning doesn't stay with them for long. Making examinations more flexible and integrated into classroom life, this is very important because what the children learn, they can only have an outcome based on that. We are talking a lot about learning outcomes now, and we are propagating them all over the country. So when we are talking about learning outcomes, we need to have a lot of flexibility in that. When many children 
may be better in certain abilities, may have potential in uh, certain things and may show strengths which may be different from other children. So how our learning outcomes are going to be affected and how these children will come up with maybe some unique learning outcomes is something we have to think about. And the last point, which I think is the most important point from the perspective of this session is nurturing and overriding identity informed by caring concerns within the democratic polity of the country. You know, this statement may sound very difficult uh, when we read it, but actually what it means is that when we label and categorize children as disabled, as disadvantaged, as poor, as, uh, you know, uh, girls who cannot do this and who cannot do that, then we are giving more uh, identity uh, emphasis. We are giving uh, more uh, emphasis on who they are than you know, rather than what they can do. So what is more important is that we have to nurture every child. And whether it's an online cl uh, class or whether it's a regular class, every child is important. And we have to nurture the child's strength. And we have to be caring about each child and rather than thinking that this child is like this, this child is like that. So we, we, we do not have expectations uh, linked with that. We have to take care that we do not form some low expectations because we give identities to few children. So this is what was very important, a foundation for National Curriculum Framework. And I would say any courses you design, any online teaching you do, the teachers need to understand this, that every child learns and identities are given only for provisions and not for learning. Second thing I would be focusing today on is inclusion and inclusion in the process of uh, you know, is a process of increasing participation and the participation could be in a classroom situation in an online course. It basically means that your course is designed and your course is transacted in a way that every child benefits from that. Every child can access it. So this is what uh, inclusion on online uh, in online courses is impo uh, important and is underscored here in my presentation. So why would we want to make the curriculum inclusive? Why would we want to make our online courses inclusive? Because if we don't integrate some students in our online or virtual learning courses, then we are actually not uh, thinking of an inclusive society because inclusive Inclusion in education will lead to inclusion in society. So what is more important is that we think about every child and design a course. When we do that, the course becomes beneficial and interesting and joyful for all children. Let me tell you, this is my research. I know when we do things from the perspective of children with disabilities, all children benefit. So when we want every child to learn better, we have to make our courses more inclusive. Second thing which is which may it this may lead to is yeah. make design yeah. of a system curriculum uh, is a participatory design. That means that we have people involved in designing these courses who are not only domain experts, they are also pedagogists, they are technologists, they are disability experts, they are support workers, the special teachers, and the final users. If everybody gets involved. When we design a course which is inclusive, which is applicable and accessible to all children, then we involve people who are specialists in different areas, not only human specialists. So this is how a course can be designed and should be transacted. So what kind of accessibility here we are talking about? When we talk about online courses, we are talking about hard access to hardware and software. We are talking about assistive technology. We are talking about websites which are accessible. We are talking about the e-learning platforms like uh, NCRT has a platform called Diksha. It's the same way online portals are running and they have to be accessible to all children. Then we are also talking about here pedagogical accessibility. That means our content, whichever, whatever we have designed should be accessible to all. Our resources, our document, our support uh, material, our additional material, our videos, our, uh, you know, um, another worksheets and lesson plans, everything should be accessible. Access to interaction and collaboration tool, that means chat rooms, forums, wikis, everything should be available for all children. And 
lab group works debates if we have some a contact in between then all these uh, things should also be inclusive and available for all children so mostly what is happening now in the country is that most of the e learning courses and online courses schools are running have not been very accessible to children with disability except children with physical uh, problems because they can uh, you know access these courses so this is where we are having a huge lacuna and we have to work out on that and why should we also have inclusive courses because we know that every child learns but may understand the uh, information differently may combine a few learning styles and only then can access information so when we talk about inclusive online courses are we using only lecturing or we are using also other Re, uh, methods of representing knowledge and also assessing knowledge so this is important that we understand that every child has a learning style and every child learns differently so we must also understand from this perspective that we also are, have learning styles but over the years as we have grown up we have integrated those styles and we don't remember what is a dominant learning style but however if somebody tells me that you know to remember a name of the person i may not remember but i may remember the face so i have a dominant visual learning style i know about myself so this is how the learning style comes from everybody so what does curricular inclusion means it means it involves differentiation to meet the needs of all students the content the teaching process the assessment and evaluation may be modified to help students to achieve success in online learning so it's basically what we understand by curriculum and the components of this curriculum everything should be accessible and we also now realize that children learn in a variety of ways and so the online initiatives which we undertake and the courses we run have to keep that into account we cannot have courses only for learning uh, disability nor we can have only for hearing impairment that is not the government platform so government is running courses which have to be more inclusive and that is very true for any um, school related courses so universally designed online learning is not designed with any particular one particular group of students in the mind you must remember that and if that happens then of course we are segregating a number of children so um, and neither does it is should be designed with you know the perspective that only one group of disability will have access to them this should be these should be designed to uh, you know uh, give access to education to a number of groups and that you know uh, i like i showed you earlier the moment you think like the courses are universally designed the more accessible they will be for all children and that is why it is important also to understand that we have multiple ways of gaining access to information and that is why when these online courses are being transacted or given or initiated they should also have multiple ways of gaining that uh, access to this course so imparting information is important but how it is important and parted is also important the different learning styles should match the way the information is imparted then there should be also multiple ways of engaging so some may be engaged more with visuals the other may in, you know like the audio much more some may also like some activities some may like actual demonstrations so these ways different ways of engaging children is also important and there should also be flexible methods of learning we should not have only one method one size fits all for all children so this is a framework which i really like and i think any uh, course you design online for children uh, must follow this framework which means there is a pre design where we decide what kind of course is it a school based course is it a geography course is it a social science course or is it a geometry course or mathematics course any course you design thing you need to have a theoretical framework you're following ncert you following any other textbook or you designing your own material and you have some conceptual selections on which you will design this material then there should be an organizational context which mean that uh, you know what should be the course objectives what should be the curriculum and then 
kind of users are we doing it for teachers or we're doing it for children we need to and what kind of uh, uh, you know um, uh, accessibility they have as far as digital hardware software uh, uh, com things are concerned so this all need analysis also needs to be done in the pre-design stage then we have the design where we develop the pedagogical model how this course is going to be imparted is this going to be through print uh, sending it through post or it should be online it should be through computer it should through be a mobile app so uh, didactic method which are actually uh, accessible to all what we mean by this is that there should be an equal opportunity to given to all children to assess these courses the assessment tools should be designed and the activities and contents also should be initiated. Now we in NCRT on our platform have courses where we have given links to better explanations of few concepts which cannot be assessed by children. So all that flexibility needs to be within built in within the, the pedagogical supports need to be built up in the online courses. And then we need to also think about the technology, how we're going to do it. It's going to be an design or it's going to be a virtual learning hardware software support has to be provided from that perspective this is the model which should be the bible for designing any online courses for children for teachers for any professionals so we all know as uh, uh, you know since it's school education i'm talking from that perspective we all know that we have a lot of ways we can present material we can do it through text we can do it audio video graphic representations we also, uh, you know, uh, have to decide on the goals and they should be linked with each other. It's not that we start with the difficult one and then go to the simple one. We all know, we are all educationists, how they can be intuitively done up and then accessibility. We need to have assistive technology available to convert the alternative for formats. Like some uh, person wants to, you know, uh, understand something which is uh, uh, given as a concept through a video so those kind of clips and you know on-site graphics are also very important then we have to have understanding that we are now not having children who have the same level of cognitive and intellectual abilities here we are talking about children who may vary as far as their strengths and we can, uh, their strengths are concerned their abilities are concerned so we need to also think about those children who may need some supplement information and also a different accessible strategies response and maybe that kind of inbuilt additional classes can also be built up for some children and response to unique individual needs that means there may be children who may become absent for some time and may not be present while the course is going on so what have we decided about them what should be done about them so varying formats for students, response is important. Some student may want to talk about orally about something. Some person would want to write and give submit the answers and test items. You know, the quantity is not important. The quality of the responses is very important. We should keep that in mind. There can be a flexibility in the time limits because we know that some children may take more time if they have to access supplementary material. From the same perspective, we also understand, though we are talking about flexibility, we also have to maintain some standards. So we have to design our learning outcomes and we have to also monitor whether our children are attaining those learning outcomes through these online courses. So I, I would talk about from the perspective of specific, uh, you know, um, specific groups like hearing impairment. And we know, you know, we have seen at the, especially in the higher classes, we have seen through our uh, researches that there are problems related to language. My previous speaker talked a lot about it. And we found that the kind of needs that emerged in the classroom learning may also be applicable to online uh, learning would be in terms of language, new vocabulary, discriminating between words, understanding words with multiple meaning, connect making connections between ideas, concept, organizing thoughts or com com uh, composing thoughts. So these are abstract reasoning strategies, understanding and using phrases, grammar usage and sentence construction. Now, these are the kind of things which we ignore when we are you know uh, doing the courses training in the classroom so we have to understand these needs would exist so what are we doing about these needs as far as social science is concerned now there are a lot of language involved and so 
there is a lot of technical terms, abstract concepts, comparisons, cause effect relationships, and chronology of events. So, what kind of strategies are, are, are we are using to design? What kind of pedagogies are we using to design these courses? Whether we are heavy text is too heavy for all children. Are we making any tables? Are we including any graphics? And how are we, uh, you know, uh, conceptualizing the implications of this text? How they are going to make inferences? So these kind of things, these needs, they have uh, children with hearing impairment may have difficulties in these areas. So we have to take into consideration. I'm just specifically talking about that. There, there may be other difficulties related to other disabilities. I'm not touching those here. And mathematics, I've seen that mostly the linguistic uh, problem related to mathematics, vocabulary was like, you know, many children, reciprocal, linear, which we use so, um, you know, unconsciously in a mathematic language may not be clear to many children. And uh, sometimes uh, word problems are there, not a words are used to explain a problem. And there are and words used in mathematics, which may have multiple meanings like interest, you know, table, credit. So some children may find it very difficult to understand, especially children with hearing impairment. So some of these needs are there which exist for children with hearing impairment. However, if we take care of these needs in the sense we do it for all children, I, it's not only hearing impairment. Many other children may find it difficult, some words. It's not that their levels are all same. Every child is different. So, um, you know, so this kind of things we have to take into consideration and experts and pedagogy experts should also be a part of deciding what kind should the course be like. The assessment needs to be aligned also. Now, um, we have to decide on the learning outcomes we want to achieve through these courses. And we have to also design our learning assessment methods to achieve, you know, to measure whether these learning outcomes have been achieved or not. So both need to be aligned to our learning outcome, the intended learning outcomes, which are not fixed, which are not standardized. You can change it and make it flexible according to the children who are taking these courses. But they need to be there because unless and until we have some objectives, some learning outcomes, we don't know which direction we are taking and how much our child is learning. So uh, to end it, I would just say, it's not impossible for uh, children to be integrated in online courses. All children can take these in online courses. However, it is also important that we involve the different needs of different children while we design these courses. And we should not segregate or think that these children are not capable of learning. All children, I believe, are capable of learning. Thank you.